not only will the shipping companies decarbonize, they will do an active effort in speeding it up. Question is, are, are, are we doing enough? Are companies who are actually in our industry, in our sector, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing in order for them to meet our corporate social responsibility? Is the CSR program that most of our companies have, or most of the companies that we work with in the, in the sector, are actually looking at this as the core or one of the core activities that they need to achieve? And when will they achieve? First of all, I don't think it's a yes or no question because, I mean, I'm right now putting especially my container shipping hat on and you, you obviously find companies all along the spectrum. That, that's one thing that's critical to keep in mind. Uh, are they doing enough? Well, you, you can always say you should do more, but there's a couple of nuances here that are important. Uh, first of all, how quick and are they even going to, to decarbonize? And from that perspective, I have an expectation, at least on, on the shipping part, that not only will the shipping companies decarbonize, they will do an active effort in speeding it up. And, and maybe it's a nuance on why it's not just, you can say, a wild guess on my part. The way I see this drive on the container shipping sector is that it is driven by a financial motivation and not primarily by an environmental consideration. Because much as we can talk about that this is for the environmental benefit, uh, if we're being as, just a slightly bit cynical, uh, the financial motivator tends to be a lot stronger uh, than the green motivator on its own. And happily here, the two actually go hand in hand. And whilst most people will say, well, hang on a second, if you're going to decarbonize, that's going to be more expensive. Surely that goes counter. But if we think it through, if you think about this long term, as a shipping line right now, you're dependent on one type of energy and one alone, that is basically oil. Which means if oil becomes extremely expensive, you are stuck with that fuel source. On the other hand, if I decarbonize my ships, that means I have to transform to use some type of green electro fuel. It doesn't really matter whether it's green methanol or ammonia or a third source, but the point is I can make the green fuel on all types of energy. So if I decarbonize my fleet, I become independent of the energy source. And then we can then also, let's say, hope for, actually think, over time, the cheapest energy is going to be the sustainable energy. So that is why they are going to decarbonize. The second part is, why would they necessarily doing it rapidly? Again, there is a financial motivation. Uh, originally, the industry seemed motivated by the IMO 2050 goals that said we should reduce, uh, reduce total emissions by 50% in 2050. That was then, uh, the ante was then up slightly by a number of carriers that said they're gonna totally decarbonize. Well, reducing to the IMO 2050 goals, but totally decarbonize are basically the same thing. Then Harpark Lloyd upped the ante further by setting the date of 2045, then surpassed recently by Musk that said 2040. Now, why would some of these large companies want to do it faster when it costs them money? Very simple. If I accelerate the decarbonization, it also becomes much more expensive in terms of upfront investments. This favors large existing container lines and raises the barriers of entry for competitors. So the faster I decarbonize, the more I can also solidify my competitive position in the industry. That is a clear advantage for all the existing container lines to go down this path. So what I see going forward here is an industry that will indeed try to decarbonize as rapidly as physically possible, driven by economic motivations. The environment will clearly benefit. It's not an either or. The main barrier I see, what is going to slow this down, is going to be the physical availability of fuel. That is the critical element. That is something not directly under the control of any of the shipping lines or other supply chain participants. And uh, before I stop my rambling stream of words here, just to throw a number out there, you could see Musk, for example, a couple of weeks ago announced a collaboration with six fuel providers to provide green methanol for their coming fleet of 16,000 TEU ships. And if you only look at the number, it looks like a lot of fuel they're going to produce 700,000 tons 
of green fuel. That sounds like a lot. Until if I look at shipping in total, we are probably going to need something like 800 million tons of fuel, which is a thousand times more than what the MERSC agreement right now does. So is it the right direction? Yes. Are the shipping lines likely going to accelerate the agenda as much as possible? I actually think yes. But we should look not just at this industry, we should look at the fuel providers. How quickly can they actually accelerate? Because it doesn't do us any good. We have green ships or even green aircraft, which is going to use uh, electric fuels as well, if the fuel providers can't keep up.